Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic. Positronic. I'm Barry P. Cook. And I'm Matt Cat 83 from Geek What? So today we are going to be reviewing She-Hulk season one. And we are going to just chit chat about this uh, this show because we have a... Uh, different opinions of it and everything uh-huh. um and 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 i think some same opinions and stuff but we're just going to chit chat about it and get down to the nitty gritty and everything and hopefully you guys come along for the ride and everything um so barry yes my first question for you is and really just uh offsetting what did you think about this show overall you know uh i certainly don't think they reinvented the wheel and it wasn't uh uh, the second coming, as one might say. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I wouldn't say it was a five-star deal or, you know, uh, a 10 out of 10. It was, you know, I would say a three-ish, 3.5 out of five, eight out of 10 kind of deal. I feel you. I feel you. I did not like this show. I would not give it a 3.5. I'd give it like a one at best. It was not my favorite. There were some things that I did like about it. I do want to discuss those when we get to it. But um, yeah. Um, so I real quick just want to ask you, uh, who, what was your, what was your over and through this entire season before we get into the, to the details of our thoughts, what was your favorite episode of this season? I would have to say... Uh, the one with Madison, but not where you think. <laughs> yeah, I did. I really did like Madison. Um, uh, did you like it just because of Madison or did you like it for other reasons? No, I, I think she was the highlight in that episode. But, you know, I thought it wasn't Wongers. Yeah, Wong was funny. Mm-hmm. Wong was good. Um, I'm trying to think back about what I said in my review, but I think. For me, that might have been the episode where the show found its humor. Mm -hmm. It was kind of fits and starts before that. But I thought that, you know, it was there was action. They had the action sequence when they were fighting the demons. Mm -hmm. I thought that the magician guy, I forget his name, he was funny. Um. And I don't know why they said the writers, you know, I know, you know, the writers came out and said they can't write courtroom stuff. Right. But to me, every time they were in the courtroom, I thought they did a good job. So in this episode, there was, you know, an extensive courtroom thing. And I thought I thought they did well with it. I have to agree. And I mean, I I can uh, say something about it right now when I really feel like that they should have done the more courtroom scenes, because I personally thought that they weren't as bad. As a, as a, everybody was, you know, a lot of people want to talk about how it's not really lawyer talk that they're doing, but I thought it was fine for the comedy of this show. And there are, um, I can't think of what the name of the show is, but there are lawyer shows that don't seem like there's very much lawyering going on. It just seems like they wrote kind of funny stuff. But I do think that they didn't um, utilize the Allie McBeal characteristics that they talked up so much um, beforehand. And I really feel like they should have done that more. Yeah, Allie McBeal was a very weird show. Yeah. Uh, did you watch Allie McBeal? I did. Uh, yeah, I did. So, because, the like, you know, they had the whole the whole biscuit guy. He was yeah, biscuit. the biscuit guy. And then they had the, oh, who was the straight guy who kept saying, um, he dated Lucy Liu on the show. and he. he I don't weird, remember all their names. Weird, yeah, it's been a while. Weird. Yeah, it's a long time. He had weird idiots. So like he'd be like, uh, "Oh, kneecap," and they just utter like he, he like he like kneecaps or whatever, or knee pits. And I That's- think that I honestly think that that stuff like that would have been way better for this show. I felt like they should have contained this show to that office space, um, and then done her she hawky stuff. I mean. And I just want to say, and I know I, some people don't like when people like me bring this up, but if they just would have utilized the source material of the comic books, mm. um, especially like Dan Slott's run, and then I can't remember the guy before him off the top of my head, and I wish I would have wrote it down, but their their run on the comic book wasn't like mind-blowing, but it was pretty good, um, especially that I thought that it had a good mix of lawyer humor slash, uh, you know, superheroism. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's the one thing I don't have is I don't have a basis of comparison or basis for comparison to the uh, the comics, the source material. So that's where you kind of have. Well, I don't know. I want to say you have an advantage in that way when you're watching it, but 
I wonder if it isn't in some ways a disadvantage only because I wonder about myself. Like if I, if I knew the comics wellish, I wouldn't be able to not compare it. Right. So it keeps you from sort of evaluating it on its own, but at the same time, you not being familiar with it is so it's like a it's like a 50 50 thing yeah i have to agree i have to agree um you know uh yeah there is that balance and i do i do think that because i've i read the comic books that i'm just like um you know i'm constantly comparing but i also i also go um they should they could have they really could have utilized it just a little bit better because those comic books aren't too bad and it's the only thing dan slot wrote at Marvel that I I like. The rest of his stuff is shit. Um, my favorite episode was definitely episode eight with Daredevil. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I've seen people say that they didn't like Daredevil because they should have kept his dark aspects. Um, now, I didn't mind Matt Murdock having a more lively and carefree personality. I thought that the acrobatic moves from um, episode eight were an added bonus. And I wish that the the Netflix version would have used that more. Um, I also liked, the, I definitely liked the flirting because um, mm. it was different in how he flirted with Jen uh, compared to the Netflix show. Um, but it is a part of his character and it's, it is faithful to the comic books uh, as far as that goes, or at least I think so. Um, and I do think that the director pretty good did a pretty good job that episode. And I liked how that he had his bull whip and he used that and everything. And he <laughs> added new flavor so that the character the characters like him, um, you know, like I said, more acrobatic in his fighting style. It was it was it was nice to see that. Um, yeah, I have to say that was probably my second favorite episode now that you mention it. Right on. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I thought they had really good chemistry. Yeah. Okay. I like meat cute, so I always <laughs> I always love that shit. I like um um I just love love stories. Like whenever I meet a new couple, I always ask them uh like how'd you guys meet? And I'm always interested in that stuff because it's just uh it's just really nice and everything. See, I didn't watch the Daredevil show. I watched Jessica Jones, um, Luke, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and then I did watch the Defenders. Oh well, you missed out on the best one out of yeah, all of those. Right. <laughs> she watched. I have to go back and watch it, but yeah, I mean, season two is probably my least favorite season, but I feel like I feel like they brought it right back home in season uh, three. So oh, that's yeah, okay. So uh, who was your favorite character out of the main cast of characters? Well, it seems kind of boilerplate to say Jen, but I think you know Jen. Gotcha. I think right on. she. Uh, you know, and I don't want to get too far away from your question, but I, you know, a lot of people, and it's not just, it's not just yourself that didn't like the show. I'm sure, you know, there are a lot of people that did. Oh yes. There's plenty. <laughs> it's a lot. Uh, so, and I think, you know, and I think a lot of reviewers out of the gate just were not going to give this show a chance. I, I think you did. I think you yeah. were. I was excited for this show. Yeah, I think, you know, we won't mention any names, they're erotic, um, <laughs> and, uh, and others. The usual <laughs> suspects. Yes, just were um, looking to hate it, I think, from the beginning. And right. I, I think they found what they were looking for. And they had decided from the trailers that this character was going to be trash. But right. I didn't think that at all. I think, you know, I, I think she was very affable. You know, people said, oh, she's going to be perfect at everything. It's such a trash character. No, she bumbled through everything. She was hapless. She, you know, had crap luck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she screwed things up. So I thought she was very relatable in that way, especially in a comedy show. So I like right that character a lot. Yeah, I did not like Jen. She <laughs> upset me. Um, well, I just didn't like it because I don't, I feel like the writers, when it came to Jen, by the way, my favorite character was Nikki, um, even oh, though yeah. Nikki kind of annoyed me also, because I was just like, you know, I don't know if I'd be friends with you, Nikki, but I feel like uh, I related to Nikki because I was like, you know, I'd be like that, like, I'd be all super nice to to Jen's mom, even though she was super annoying and not, a, in my opinion, not, she was such a Yenta, but at the same time, I was like, I totally get it. Um, but uh, but at the same, and I was like, you know, I maybe it's just because uh, I saw too much of myself in Nikki. Uh, but um, yeah, no, Nikki was my favorite. But I think Jen, when it came to Jen, I think the problem was you had too many people writing her, 
And they all didn't chit chat with each other because in the first episode, she talks about how she can control her anger and she knows how to be a lawyer. And she's so, you know, she knows how to do her job as a lawyer better than most men that tell her that mansplain to her. But then in episode uh, eight, where she's with that uh, uh, leapfrog guy, she doesn't take time to ask him what fuel he put in his boots. I'm all like, you know, a lawyer would sit down and ask these kinds of questions. So I'm, it's like, you know, uh, you know, you, you can't sit here and give me this long speech about how you're just so freaking fantastic and then end up not being so freaking fantastic. All right. Because um, you would have to ask, did you use this suit as it was rated? Yeah, exactly. It's like, and she didn't even ask him any questions. She was just like, oh, will it malfunction? You definitely have a case. And I'm all like, uh, what? <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Let's, let's roll. And even if like that would have just been the case, it would, I mean, I would have been fine, but then, um, yeah, the Daredevil stuff was really the only stuff I liked in that episode. Um, okay. So besides the main cast, who was your favorite character? Oh, uh, I, uh, you know, I liked the guy that designed the clothes. He wasn't in it. Luke right? Jacobson. Yes. Or Jacobs. Was it Jacobs or Jacobs? It doesn't uh, matter. What was his first name? Jacob. I don't remember. He was very funny. Yeah, he was very funny. I liked it when he's all like, uh, what is there a hag convention? I was like, oh, <laughs> I was right. like, I like you already. You're fun. Mine was Madison, of course, because she was just she um, I really wish they would have brought her back, at least just for that last uh, that last um scene where um wong gets him out of uh, uh emil out of prison just her in the background like hey yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah so i i really like madison okay last question and then we can start talking about this show I have more to change my answer though on the last one now oh so it's madison because i forgot madison somehow <laughs> right no i get it there listen i asked you this question willy-nilly i get it it's it's totally you get you have you reserve the right to change your opinion okay. at any point in time if yeah. halfway through this you're like i changed my mind i liked wong the best <laughs> i'll i'll we'll go with it okay all right last question what was your favorite cameo slash easter egg character that's like from the comics or from another uh marvel movie or anything like that so who did we have we had daredevil hulk abomination um uh uh um gosh what was her face um oh titania titania and then the other lawyer um oh gosh what was her a uh, mallory mallory book is from the comics oh, uh right. pug um anybody from the comic books leapfrog um immortal uh the immortal guy um oh yeah that guy. yeah i'm trying to think who else is from the comics i don't think that that magician is from the comics what was his name blaze something blaze That's but it johnny wasn't Bruce. johnny yeah Bruce. Uh, but it, he's not from the comics, though. At least if he is, I don't know who he is. Right. Um, yeah, anybody from the comic books that, uh, you know, um, was your favorite cameo? Hmm. I'm going to say Daredevil. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go with you and say Daredevil also. I, 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 he was my favorite. Just because, like I said before, I really liked I really liked his moves, you know, and I don't I feel like in the Netflix show, even though I do like that show, I don't think that because, you know, Daredevil is acrobatic. He can jump from like building to building and stuff. And I, I don't think they I don't think they had the budget to utilize that. And I don't think that they did it. All more. right. All right. OK, now let's get to the nitty gritty of this show. Yes. Um, It started off with episode one. And I have to tell you right now, I have I, I from the get go, I had problems. Um, you know, I, I didn't like, um, you know, I, I didn't like, for instance, that they have all this, you know, exposition about like her blood. And then they just and, and then when, when it gets to the end, it just falls off the rails. And I'm all like and kind of in their defense they did it was supposed to be originally a 10 episode season and from what i've been reading online um they 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 took stuff from one episode and they put it in another episode apparently daredevil was supposed to show up earlier on in the season like within the first half of the season not the second half of the season um so it sounds like they just had a and they had to do reshoots and stuff a lot of the fourth wall breaking which i want to talk to you about that um a lot of the fourth wall breaking they had to do in reshoots and i'm and so I I feel like this show was such a hot mess out the gate and the first episode did not it really like I was just like, oh, man, this show for me personally, I was just like, man, this is not what I thought it was going to be. Uh, what did you think about the first episode in terms of the show and 
like its overall arcing thingy. I liked the first episode a lot. That one, though, you know, was such a uh, a focal point for the haters <laughs> because of that one scene where she says, you know, I control my anger infinitely more than you, which I had hoped they would walk back later and have her say, you know, that was at some point, have her have like a come to Jesus moment. Um, I keep making Gentile references. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, she, you know, I, I kept hoping they were gonna have her walk, her, have her walk that back and have her come to a realization that eh, she kind of was talking with a chip on her shoulder, but they didn't do that. So anyway, the reason I bring that up is because people were so focused on that one moment. And I found myself defending that moment, defending that episode more than sort of just taking it as its as its own. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, I, I was I came at it at a point from uh, the point of view I came to it at by the time I did my review was I was in defense mode. So right. it was hard to sort of in some ways evaluate it on its own, but Oh, and of course, you know what? I think I said in my review at the time that they, I wish they hadn't shortcutted the the origin story. Right. I wanted to talk to you about that, but you yeah. go with your thought because they you shortcutted it a little bit, uh, you know, by doing that three month. Well, first of all, they did the three month time jump, so they they never like we're supposed to believe in three months, nothing, <laughs> nothing happened, but. Not only that, they they just shortcut. Well, I don't know. They she spent that time on the island or wherever with Bruce, so it was a couple of weeks. But they, I don't know. It seemed like they shortcutted between those two things. They they did a shortcut of the early stages of her situation. So I liked the episode a lot as premieres go because you know he Hulk's in it and she's in it and there's a fight and the whole thing. But at the same time, they they. They shortcutted that stuff, and so I don't know. Maybe not a ten. Maybe maybe a seven. <laughs> right on. Yeah. I uh, before I talk about the origin. Well, let's talk about the origin story, and then I want to talk to you about the haters. Yeah. Um, the origin story. I really feel like they bumbled this. Um, you know, it, you know, like mo like you most people know in the origin in the comic books, she gets shot by a gangster. And then Bruce is there and he gives her her blood, his blood. And then she gets to become She-Hulk or whatnot. And then this one, I felt like it was just, they're just like, oh, we're just going to do a car accident. And the blood just, she just happens to get cut. And the blood just happens to go into her cut. I thought was very weak and lazy. You know, I'm all like, listen, I get it that you've got problems from the get go with your show in terms of like budget and, you know, reshoots and constraints and all that stuff. But I just go, you're telling me you can't write a better origin story than this. And her origin story was like, what, like, like maybe four minutes. I was like, this is just weak as shit. And I'm just like, you can't. You, you can't tell me that you guys sat down and thought about this. It was it was the first thing you thought of, and it was the laziest thing you thought of in terms of origin stories go. Um, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. It was a little quick. It was a little quick. Somehow I still liked it. Don't ask me how. I, I, I you know, because hey. I, I, it was funny, you know. And... You like what you like. I can't, uh, like I tell people, I'm not going to tell you what to like, but uh, I can't tell you that I like something that I don't. Yeah, right. right. Um. But yeah, okay, let's let's take a break from all the the show talk and let's talk about these haters and everything. <laughs> which I have been called a hater myself, which is fine. I'm not really one of those people like uh that cares about that stuff. But this show did not help in terms of giving was giving fuel to the fire. I think one thing that came out was I think that uh you know Jessica I I don't know if it was Jessica Gao, uh but they they said something about like this was just an F you to the toxic male trolls. And I'm all like, you're going to waste so much money uh, and time just to make a show to say fuck you to online trolls. I was like, uh, well, of course, they're going to they're going to hate on this. And I think that I think also not only they also I think that Marvel nut huggers slash Marvel fans 
They, I just think that they need to start considering the faults of these shows and stop loving every single thing that Marvel puts out. I think that most of the times of if the show or the movie includes uh, really clever concepts or really great emotional beats, um, we can focus on the positives. But I think that when it comes to shows like this personally, I think that they just constantly were just trying to beat the fan um, that's going to be negative over the head instead of trying to say, hey, you're going to hate this show, but I'm going to pull you in and try to make you love this show. Uh, with my clever writing and my, you know, my good stuff. Because I do think there was good stuff in this show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just think overall it was just bad. What do you think? I don't know why they say that stuff in the press. I don't. I think Jessica Gow needs to stop talking because she, <laughs> the more she talks, she just keeps digging that hole or, you know, yeah. she keeps just, you know, tying that noose. And I'm just like, honey, stop saying, like she said, like, we don't, we didn't know any how to write lawyer talk. And I'm like, why yeah. would you admit to that? Why would you admit to that? Yeah, you know, sure. this was, you know, I can't remember all this stuff. She, she blamed the fans for like bad ratings. I can't remember off the top of my head. She did a lot of this stuff. And I just go, stop talking, stop taking interviews. Cause you're not good at it. Just right, but, go write your show. Yeah. Even the guys behind Star Trek though, who uh, was behind discovery. I can't remember which one of the showrun as it was but he said a dumb thing too about like uh we did this to piss off the you know the fans yeah which i go why would you why would you say that like i i'm like me personally like um you know keeping to she hulk i um i didn't want to hate this show because i did enjoy the comic books as i said before but when you're saying stuff like, oh, my goal was to piss you off, like I go, OK, well, I'm already pissed off because you said that that was your goal. You goal uh, exceeded. I'm now mad. I'm not going to look for the positive things in your show. I'm only going to look at the negative because that's what you want. Yeah. Um, But I do think that people, some people and I have no problem admitting to it. Like, I think like if you ever watch that RK outpost, what an angry individual. I thought I was mad. He is pissed off at everything and i'm all like you need to calm yourself down <laughs> um because some of the things i think that people like have a tendency to focus on i'm all like that first speech okay i did think it was a little ridiculous because she's all like i know how to control my anger better than you and i'm all like do you though because if you if you watch him in that first uh avengers movie he can change at will to become the hulk because he's always angry but he knows how to not pull it out the hulk at every single moment so I'm all like, you know, and then she and I just want to say, like, I know that a lot of people want to say, like, the 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 stuff in there, like the the cat calling and stuff and then um, calling women females uh, that Nikki says in that last episode. I'm trying to remember some of the other stuff. I just go some of this stuff may take place, but it's not as prevalent as people like I've never heard a slash cat called anybody no, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm yeah. just saying I've never done it slash witnessed it. Like, I'm not on the street like, hey, baby, I got what you want. I got what you need and everything. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not all at, you know, at work, you know, like, look at these females. They don't know how to work right and everything. So I think that at some points in time, these these writers they only focus on the things that have happened to them and then they over exaggerate. Like, I'm all like, don't get me wrong. These people do exist, but I just go online when it comes to when they were like oh well they should have hired the best person for the job which i do think they should hire always hire the best person for the job or when you had like why did they have to make it a woman it was a man first and all this stuff i go that stuff does exist but um it's only online and that's not real life that's not yeah. real life like when i talk to people about that um you know they're just like oh this character just sucks like she hawk just sucks in my opinion like i'm all like i don't care if she's the new Hulk of the MCU, she's just a bad character for me personally. What do you think? Go. Sorry, I talk way too much. That's okay. No, I, you know, I think they, if you're gonna see, it's okay to say stuff that's exaggerated, like you point out, or not representative of reality. If you are trying to demonstrate that your character, just for whatever reason, happens to have that point of view mm, that's a good point accurate or not the right thing there the thing there though is you then if that point of view is not accurate to real life and it just happens to be the way they see things 
you then have to show them sort of realize that over the course of a movie or a show, or whatever, sort of realize that that's not reality. Like they mm -hmm. can have that point of view, but unless it's real, at some point they have to sort of disabuse themselves of that notion and come out of it and say, you know, I kind of had a jaded outlook about men or life as a woman. And mm. it really, it really was a skewed perception. And I realized that now. And I said after that first episode that, because the hate was so intense after the first episode. For sure. I was, I was just saying like, can we just, can we not <laughs> like after like, the first episode? Dial just, it back. <laughs> yeah. Can we not just put the thing in the garbage? I mean, so let's give the character time to develop. Let's see if she walks it back. And she personally didn't walk that back. I think that the the surrounding writing kind of rehabilitated some of the man-hating stuff that they started out with. I think they balanced it out a little bit, but uh, it, it it's they, they needed to do more, I think, to show that she realizes that that position, I don't think they did anything actually, to show that she realizes that that position wasn't necessarily accurate. And I was disappointed that they didn't do that by the end of the show. Right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's get back into the episodes. Um, okay, so episode two was basically her uh, with Emil Blonsky and getting him, you know, trying to get him out of jail because she gets fired um, after that first episode uh, in the courtroom, which I just want to say um, this is OK. So she does get fired in the comic books, but I really it goes back to. Um, and like I said before, um, you know, I, I read the comic books or you said before I read the comic book. So I was a little bit like comparative, but I really feel like when it comes to Jen in this show, I didn't feel bad for her when she got fired. Because they didn't set anything up. Like, she she got fired because, she, what, she stopped a crazy person from attacking other people. Yeah. Um, but in the comic book, she gets fired because she becomes Hulk, she Hulk. And because in college and in high school, she's like this big nerd or whatever. When she becomes she Hulk, she becomes a party girl. Like she's she's out, you know, having a good time. She's changing into she Hulk and then partying it up. Um and but uh, in the in the the show, uh, oh gosh, and in the comic book, she gets fired. Her the last straw is she does a photocopy of her butt on the uh, the printer at work, yeah. and they're all like, "Jen, um, we're gonna let you go. Uh, we found this picture of your butt." And she's like, "Well, how do you know it was me?" And he was like, "It was a color copier." Jen. <laughs> so, um, so and and like for instance, in that uh, one episode, I think it was episode two. Um, when she get when she um, when that guy comes up to her and gives her the new job, she throws up on him, um, kind of like she did with her old boss in that in that episode. And I'm all like, you know, there's there's ways that you could have gone about this. I think that they and they did show um, some stuff that's from the comic book that I that it was a nice touch, but they didn't really go anywhere with it. Um, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. But OK, so she gets hired and she does this Emil Blonsky case. Um, how do you feel about this this case? Because it, it started in episode two, um, and then it, it went on through episode four, because that's when his parole hearing was. Oh, right. You know, I, as I was saying before, I, I don't know why they said they didn't do good courtroom stuff. I think procedurally, it was, it was well done. Mm -hmm. She, you know, brought in people to say good stuff about him. She brought in Wong to say that he broke him out against his will and that he said, you got to bring me back. So I thought that, you know, that that was good stuff because especially in a parole hearing versus like a trial, what you're trying to show is remorse and rehabilitation and all of that. And I thought, you know, I thought they did that. Um, I really liked Blonsky. I should have said this earlier because th there were a bunch of different characters I, I liked. I liked Blonsky a lot. Now there, again, I don't know how accurate it was to the comics. Um, I don't remember her defending Abomination in the comic books, if she did. But, uh, you know, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. But I mean, uh, it, this this is not the Emil Oblonsky from the the comics. I'll, I'll okay. say that it's that's it's, what I meant. Yeah, but I, I liked his characterization because you know in the beginning from the trailers and in the beginning you're thinking oh, you know this is the abomination. He's a bad guy, mm-hmm. and he's gonna do bad guy things. And anything he says that's conciliatory or uh, contrite is he's he's feeding her a line he's he's lying and he's up to something mm-hmm. but then no they showed throughout the show that he really was just genuinely this thoughtful guy who was trying to help people and i don't know i like that <laughs> i didn't i didn't like it just because it was such a such a a well first off i didn't think that emil blonsky should have got out of prison um, you know, I thought that and that's where I go to the writing on this show is bad. Uh, so which, you know, bums me out because they could have because he says in the episode, like it wasn't his fault that he um, got this this jank super ser- serum so our soldier serum syrup, whatever. But it was his fault when he injected himself with the Hulk blood at the end of Incredible Hulk. That was him. He made the leader do it. Um the government didn't give it to him as an option. Uh, so I'm all like, I'm sorry, but he turned himself into abomination and now he wants to be sent out of jail because he tore up a whole city block. Uh, that, that was his choice. Um, and then I felt like the the writers did not do a good job explaining why Wong broke him out of prison. Uh, because he, as soon as, if you remember from that episode, they were like, why did you break him out? And he, and then as soon as they go, they cut to a different scene and then they come back and he's like, and that's why I broke him out of prison. I was like, what kind of jank writing is this? You didn't have a good reason. You just like wanted to say that kind of thing. Um, and then when they did, when he did get set free, he had those like seven women and then he just dumped them in the end credit scene. And I'm all like, oh, I wish they would have shown that because I'm all like, you know, they weren't too much of soulmates now. And I honestly thought they would have made him the bad guy um, because I felt like they and I I feel like overall they didn't go far enough in terms of the intelligentsia thing. I felt like that was just a big like they just went over a cliff with that because they didn't they didn't go anywhere with it. Um Emil Blonsky, I felt like they didn't go any, they didn't go in the right places with him. I mean, it, there were so many contradictory things, and that's my problem with the writing on this show. I felt like they had the writer's room in that final episode, which I want to talk to you about. But I feel like that yeah. writer's room was not indicative of real life. I feel like the, these people were not in the same room when they wrote this show. Um, so I didn't care for Emil Blonsky personally in this show. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Uh- you know, I, I don't know. It's uh, it's hard to ignore the things you're talking about. I just, I don't know. I'm a sucker for a character that's, uh, I don't know, I, genuine is not the word, that is uh, earnest. Right on. And yeah. knows what they're talking about. And so I, you know, in the, like in the, the episode where she's in the, the therapy session, Mm-hmm. I thought that the way that they had him manage that was I can't say realistic because the characters he's talking to are comic book characters, but his sort of approach, the therapeutic approach seemed to me to be similar to how therapists are portrayed in other media. So right. I thought it was because, you know, they could have painted him and it might have been better. They could have painted him as, you know, a guy using his therapeutic knowledge to twist people. Mm. versus help them and i thought that he was helping them and everybody i, I don't know i'm a sucker for that stuff so <laughs> i like yeah, no uh i totally get it you know i get why people liked him as this little guru i get that and i can't i don't fault you for liking it i mean like i always tell people you like what you like you can't help it um i just like i said before i just think that the writing on the show was not balanced or you know even you know i just, it wasn't good um, okay, I want to talk to you about some of the court cases, if that's cool. And um, we can get back because I really, um, unless there's another specific um, uh, episode that you want to talk about besides the finale, yeah, I wanted yeah, to, yeah. I wanted to talk to you about some of the court cases. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. I'm kind of, um, I'm kind of uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, a legal wonk. Right on. In my, in my off camera life. And right on. Uh, <laughs> 
Um, yeah, like, and we had talked about it before, even though the court cases weren't like very lawyerese or whatever, I, uh, like you, I did enjoy them. I thought that they were, you know, kind of like, you know, funny-esque, except for the, the light elf one. I hated that light elf. That episode just was, that light elf was annoying as shit. Yeah. Um, I just want to say real quick, the twerking thing didn't bother me as much as it did a lot of, uh, we'll say just, you know, haters, um, yeah. Because I did, I personally felt like the the Megan the Stallion twerking thing was indicative of the comic books because She Hawk is a party girl at the office kind right. of thing. Like she's you know hungover sometimes and stuff. So I'm all like, this is this is how you know she was in the comic books. I mean, granted, the CGI was terrible. We're just gonna we're and uh, we can talk about that if you want. But and Megan the Stallion, I don't understand people these days when they stick their tongue out that ah, ha, ha, thing i'm all like why are you get your tongue in your mouth no why are you all doing that it's so weird she ah. just did saturday night live this week mm -hmm. did you uh, see she was this? she was the host of saturday oh, was it good night. yeah she did a pretty good job but her nails were out of control the woman has four foot long fingernails uh, yeah. and she her hand so every motion is this and she kept doing like you said the tongue thing and so, yeah, I don't get that. <laughs> I don't get that either. But, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. I think women just do stuff like that for the, like the nails for themselves and other women, because uh, I'm sorry, you don't need, you don't need flashy stuff to get me to come, to come uh, uh, approach you kind of thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm all like, uh, I'm not going to be all like, oh, your nails are so nice. You want this <laughs> dick? I'm just going to be like, hey, um, you, you want, you, I got something to show you. It's my dick. So, uh, but uh, yeah, so. <laughs> But in terms of courtroom cases, I really liked the one with uh, Matt Murdock because it's it's indicative of the comic books. But I think it was in the Daredevil comic books, not in the She-Hulk comic book. Don't quote me on that because I can't remember and I didn't look through my stuff to to check that out. But um, I did like that they went up against each other in court. Uh, I just wish they had done it like a better way and it was longer. Um. What was what were, uh, from what you can remember? What was your favorite courtroom scene or case? Uh, let's see. So, well, well, probably the Madison, the whole Madison with the oh, that was pretty great and all that. Yeah, because you know the interesting legal question there is how can you and, and we don't have to deal with it in this world because there is no sling ring and all of that but, or magic. Magic's not real, right? Or magic. <laughs> So the uh, so the whole idea of well we uh, he signed an NDA and he signed an agreement saying that he wouldn't you know use these things well how do you, how do you enforce that like how, how do you injunct someone from from using magic if it's not proprietary like I suppose right. this is proprietary but magic itself is not so you can I, I didn't I didn't get that but uh, you know to the extent that they could. <laughs> put that in a story and have you suspend your disbelief i thought they did a really good job and i you know i loved how they brought madison in and she handed a drink to the bailiff <laughs> yeah and she's, you and can then, drink that i'm not and, sick <laughs> yeah. and then the judge said i'm not gonna like totally rule yeah i'm gonna consider everything and just she sort of just left it hanging which i think goes back to what I was saying a minute ago, you kind of have to, because how do you, <laughs> it's magic. Like, how do you, uh, how does the legal system jibe with that? You right. Know? So it was good. I thought that at the end, she, she sort of was a cop out really, but she said, you know, I'm going to have to consider it. It needs further consideration. So I thought that right was on. Yeah, no, nope. That was, I, uh, that was a great, uh, like uh, courtroom thing. It was super fun. Okay. So now can we talk about the final episode? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, what did you think about the final episode and the wrap up of this show? I was disappointed in the finale. I agree. I, you know, like I said, I liked the show start to finish 3.5 out of five, like I was saying, but then, you know, and I recognize it, like I say, it wasn't anything fantastic, but I enjoyed it. I didn't really have any disappointments until the end. Mm. And it wasn't because I thought that the intelligentsia plot was all that exciting or the, you know, or who wanted to get her blood. Like, cause I know you were saying over the course of your reviews, they weren't giving us any more of that story. They just kept like dropping 
breadcrumbs and not really getting into it. And there was only so many episodes left. And at one point you're like, there's only like one, ep- like two episodes left. What are they going to do? We don't know who the bad guy is. Right. You're saying that. So that wouldn't have bothered me so much if at the end they had revealed a little bit more and then cliffhangered it. It almost would have been better for them to cliffhanger it than mm-hmm. what they did, which was drive it off a cliff. Right. Uh you know, it's and the the theatrical term is Deus Ex Machina. I think I think you might have mentioned that too before, where they just it's basically God of the Machine. Someone they used to use it in the Greek ancient Greece. They would write a play where everything is crazy, kind of like on this show, and you're thinking, how are they gonna <laughs> wrap this up? Right. And then what happens is literally they would lower a God character like on a a hoist. And the God would come down and say, you know, essentially everything was a dream or I'm fixing right. everything at the end. And that's kind of what they did here where they just, they brought, they had all these plot lines going Titania, the Hulk King, AKA Intelligentsia, Blonsky. And then they just, I, I would have preferred a cliffhanger to what they did, which was Jen comes out of the thing and talks to Kevin and just flips it and everything's tied up. And I I don't know. It's almost like if I didn't know better, I'd say that they were like, you know what? We're probably not going to get a second season. So as much of a cop out as it would be, we need to sort of figure out how to not cliffhanger this. But now if they do get a second season, they're in a, they're in a weird position where you gotta start over and they're really gonna leave all that stuff pat like they did it i don't know not good yeah i i agree with a lot of what you said uh i think that well i think that well and plus and plus i go back to the the writing of this show i just i just while while watching this episode i'll be honest with you there was i really didn't start to really like dislike it dislike it until that final fourth wall breaking which i want to talk to you about the fourth wall breaking just one second yeah <laughs> but when it comes to this episode specifically first off when they started out with the intro and it was like the intro from the 1970s um, oh yeah uh okay. bill bigsby uh tv show i thought that was brilliant and i yeah. honestly thought they were going to do a big uh a bill bigsby-esque episode but with She-Hulk. And I was like, ooh, this is brilliant. I was like, I love this idea. I was like, it'll give a kind of a sense of like, you know, what the, that show was like. Because I didn't watch that show, but I did watch those movies, the, those oh, yeah. Hulk movies. And I I loved them when I was a kid, even though they're they're not the best in terms of special effects. But I did like them a lot. Like my favorite one is the the trial of the Hulk because Daredevil shows up and he doesn't. It's right. he just looks like a ninja, but like his mask only yeah, goes right. here and everything. But I still it was, liked it. It was Rex um, Smith, right? What was that? Rex Smith, I think. Played yeah, him. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. I really liked it, but um, uh, I really liked that opening. I was like, this is good. But then they, they, you know, they turned it around to where it wasn't what I thought it was, and I was like, oh, okay, never mind. Uh, just that intro was was really really good. Yeah, I didn't. I don't know how I feel about her being um, arrested and put in prison because she destroyed a couple of TV screens. And I mean, and I said it in my reviews, but she was justified in smashing those TVs because if a if a if a sex tape was on a big screen in front of my coworkers, my parents, and strangers. <laughs> I would be absolutely mortified and I would probably start smashing shit too. I'd be like, I turn it off now. You got one second and I'm smashing this shit. So I feel like she was justified in that. Um, And then she grabbed that intelligentsia guy, but she didn't hurt him. She was able to let him go. And, (laughs) and the, the DOD, they, you know, put her, you know, into our damage control. They put her into custody before that. But I'm all like, all she, all she did was destroy a couple of TVs and maybe like a floor plan or whatever, and that deserves prison. What? And well, the she, best her came out through the wall too. Oh, okay, okay. She destroyed a wall and everything. I'm all like, 
If that's the the worst that she did, how is it Emil Blonsky, he gets out and Hulk is not in jail at all because of it. I just go, I just go. And, and her friends, the best they could do was get her out of prison with an inhibitor on, which by the way, Hulk in the, Bruce Banner in the first episode said he couldn't recreate that, that inhibitor collar thing. But then they do it throughout the entire freaking season. And I'm all like, they did it with Emil Blonsky. They did it with her. I'm all like, did you, I, I just want to be like, Jessica, uh, did you guys not talk to each other when writing this, this season? Because you're, you're, there's too many inconsistencies and I'm noticing like right off the bat. Uh, so mm. um, yeah. How did you feel about her getting arrested and that whole thing? Yeah. I mean, it might've been a bit of an overreaction, but the, you know, I guess she destroyed the TV and she came through the wall and she picked up that guy. I'm just wondering if, you know, because the, uh, when she's fighting with Matt Murdock, she throws a car, right? Oh, that's a good point too. Yeah. You know, so, and somebody did bring that up when I was talking to him that they did, they, she did destroy that, that parking uh, ramp or whatnot. That is a good point. Um, but I just go, it seemed like everybody was okay with that. Nobody, she wasn't arrested after that. So why is she arrested now? The thing too, though, is they didn't actually go to trial. She didn't get convicted. Right. She, they, she busted through a wall and grabbed a guy and smashed some TVs. So yeah, they arrested her and she was in jail awaiting trial. You know what I'm saying? They were going to bring charges. Right on. The way she got out of the charges was agreeing to the to the monitor so right. had it gone to trial we don't know if she would have got prison so much as probation or maybe just the same sentence so she was I, I think arresting her made sense at that point right on now that you say that I, that does make sense yeah um okay uh, I want to talk about Jen from this episode, from the first, uh, like uh, in contrast to the first episode. Sorry, I'm jumping all over the place, but I'm just, I, I wrote down notes and they're they're all jumbled. But um, okay, one thing I don't like about Jen in this show is, again, back to the writing is that they didn't, they didn't, I personally didn't feel like I understood who Jen was. Because when you look at her from the first episode, she's this strong, she knows who she is. She's not a doormat. She stands up to Bruce and she says, I'm good at my job. I'm sick and tired. Of, I'm able to handle the anger. I'm tired of people, you know, telling me how to do my job, even though I know how to do it better. I'm tired of being catcalled, all this stuff. So she's not a doormat. But then she turns into a doormat in the final episode when her mom is all, which her mom is an asshole, in my opinion, for this. But she's all like, well, I brought some exercise equipment in your room and I exercise every day at seven o'clock. And I go, you're telling me you couldn't move that, which all you did was an exercise bike. You couldn't move, or what was that, like a, an elliptical or something? You yeah. couldn't move that out of her room just for, like, what, well, like a couple of months so she could find a new place to live and a new job? And even if you couldn't because, you know, maybe you had to break it down and it's like, that's a lot of work, you couldn't rearrange your exercise schedule to fit with, you know, Jen's life. She's got to wake up every day now at 7 o'clock in the morning <laughs> and get leave her room so you can exercise, and it didn't look like it was helping that much. Uh, but... uh I, I felt like her mom was kind of an asshole in this show. Um, I did like her dad, though. Her dad was very nice, yeah. I thought. Because um, I like when the, working. What did you say? I'm glad he's working. Yeah, yeah. He's he. I, I felt throughout the entire show, I did like the dad. Like I liked it in episode, uh, what was it, like three or four after she got fired and he took her into the garage and he was like, yeah. how you doing, kid? I just want to check him out. And I was like, that's a nice touch. I really like that a lot. Um, and then in this one, when you, when they get her out of the, the jail and he's all like, people go to prison every day. It's fine. Yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah. I was like, I was like, you know, her dad is trying his best to, to, to do the, to, to comfort her and, you know, spray the reporters off his lawn. Yeah. I got water pressure for days. Um, But I don't, but one thing that this, this last episode did specifically, and I don't like it was it made fun of the source material, not just the fans. And I go, why would you allow your own show to make fun of your own source material? Because, you know, with that fourth wall breaking, which how did you feel about the fourth wall breaking throughout the entire season? And then finally this last episode. I tend to be a fan of fourth wall breaks. Mm -hmm. I think 
they're uh you know they're funny they may have overused it on this show a little bit and they now they think about it they mixed it with different stuff like it's one thing when a character has a fourth wall break but then they like had the narrator <laughs> she goes in the last episode no we're not doing a narration and then which i would have loved that if they did it I, when they started that i was like ooh, and but they didn't go with it. i was like oh never mind and then they they sort of went meta with it you know the fourth wall right. break became <laughs> it became like I don't know. It was, it got trippy when she breaks through the menu and all that. So. Yeah, I did not like that. I, I, but, but I did the, I felt like the fourth wall breaking was inviting at points and it offered a different type of Easter egg that we're, we're not used to um, that. And you know, something that fans normally expect. Um, And, but I, I, and I did think that the, that finale, this finale, I thought it was, and I'll use the term bold, but it, but uh, maybe not bold. That's not the right word. It was somewhat because she has done that in the comic books before. She broke the fourth wall, walked through panels, talked to the writer of the comic book. Um, so I thought that that was fine. It's just this was not written well. This wasn't cleverly written. Like I was like, okay, we're going to go here, but you didn't do it in a good good way. It's like It's like you had an idea, but you didn't know how to execute it correctly. And I, from what I understand, they had a completely different ending uh, than this, but the, those reshoots was fixed. was fixing that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Titania, like Titania shows up, Bruce Banner shows up, all that stuff. It, that, that part, I actually, I didn't mind it because I was like, all right, it's crazy, but whatever. Um, and like the blood thing, I was just like, all right, they're just going to wrap this shit up. It's like a friggin' episode, uh, season of american horror story where it's like it's really good until like the last episode and they just wrap it up by everybody getting shot and everything yeah, like right. that. um okay how did you feel about she uh she hulk meeting kevin how did you feel about that i mean you know i think it was clever because of course when she starts saying i want to talk to kevin you're thinking kevin feig or how do you however you say his name kevin feige and then <laughs> they came up with the uh you know k-e-v-i-n whatever the heck it was that they those yeah were. i don't remember what it stood for uh, no uh but so you know i i think it was okay they were trying to poke fun at the idea that marvel studios is uh you know like a, 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 a like a plot engine and it just it just you know it just turns out content and uh you know it is a, a monolith such a monolith it's well, not a monolith but such a big machine at this point that it might as well be a factory you know a story factory right. versus you know something more well honed and and crafted mass produced versus craftsmanship right so I think trying to poke fun at that and i guess it worked but it was only there to service I think they were trying to poke fun at that, but then, but they also used it to service this whole, like I was saying before, Deus Ex Machina thing, where they just wrapped everything up in a way that I don't know. It, it cheapened everything they had. I think it cheapened everything they did through the course of the season. I agree. Yeah, and and I think that's the best way to put it. It cheapened everything that they had done beforehand. Continue yeah. with your thoughts. Sorry. Oh yeah, and I I think it's too bad because. Uh, overall, like I said, I didn't, I didn't think it was garbage. I didn't think it was bad. I thought it was an entertaining show. I liked, uh, Jen, because like I said, she was affable, I think, and bumbled through stuff and it's relatable in a way. So I liked all that stuff. I liked the humor. And then in the end, they just, it's, it was just not well done in the end. Right. I personally did not like Kevin. I didn't like, you know, she had a lot of jokes in this one that I was like, okay, whatever about, but like, she's like, what are the X-Men? And he's like, can't tell you that. And I'm all like, okay. And everything. But then she was, uh, one thing she did say was, um, she talked about, I didn't like that. She got to write her own ending. I was like, what, what is going on here? And then I also, first off, I also thought that Kevin Feige should have made an appearance. I'm like, you can't, you're telling me you can't, uh, set aside, 
a couple minutes of your day to 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 re to shoot a, a scene with this or whatnot. But it's fine. I get it. Whatever. It, I, and I also felt that it was kind of insulting, like saying like he's just a robot and pushing out, you know, content instead of trying to create something that that was you know that people love yeah. instead he's just you know pushing out content just be for the sake of content's sake um also they made a joke about the visual effects team and how like they like we didn't change back uh but do it off screen because the visual effects team have moved on and i thought that was a little insensitive considering the fact that it just came out that the uh, visual effects team are, you know, losing time with their family because they're constantly overworked and underpaid and all that stuff. So I thought that was a little insensitive. Um, but, you know, I know, oh, boo-hoo for you. Um, and then I also, and some of their jokes didn't land because when she's all like, when he's like, uh, see you in the movie, and she's like, wait, am I in the movie? And he's like, no. I go, yeah, but she is in the movies because Mark Ruffalo said she's in that Captain America 4 movie. He like confirmed it. And I'm like, I'm all like, so, you know, maybe you guys should talk to each other over at Marvel and tell Mark Ruffalo to stop giving away spoilers because he's just been spoiling <laughs> everything. Uh, the, him and Tom Holland, they're just, you know, telling everybody everything. Um, I did not like this scene. Uh, I felt like, you know, I felt like they they wanted to go for a certain thing, like talking to the writer and everything. Uh, I just feel like it didn't work, in my opinion. Or at least for me, it didn't work. And she got to write her own ending. I was like, what? I was yeah. like, okay, whatever. Um, okay. It wouldn't so bad if they had, if she had changed one or two of the elements. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, maybe made it a tiny bit less crazy. But they, she wrote, changed everything they were doing. She got rid of Bruce. She got rid of Titanic. It was just, it was, it was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. I, I really, I wish, I, I want to, I kind of want to see what their original ending was now because, mm -hmm. um, because uh, let, uh, we can just move over to the the final scenes or whatever. So she's, uh, you know, Emil goes back to prison and everything, and uh, she's celebrating with her family and Matt Murdock right. at a little picnic, which I was all like, "Are they dating now?" I'm, I'm fine with that, but it just seems like very like it's just. I don't know. It's just like, hey, we just met. We smashed. We're dating. And I'm all like, huh, whatever. OK, fine, fine. <laughs> OK, I can I can kind of go with you a little bit on some of this stuff. But then Bruce Banner shows up with Scar. And I don't know how you felt about it, but I hated it. I was all like, this is how you're introducing a key character from the comic books, a huge character. He looks, in my opinion, ridiculous ridiculous his five head it's like his hair starts here and i'm like did they shave his head or is he losing his hair because either way i don't like it i think this character looks ridiculous from what i understand he did have speaking lines and there was more going on there but again they they redid all this stuff and i'm all like it wasn't for the better i'll tell you that um how did you feel about this this picnic part you know, I thought it was good insofar as it continued the narrative where the family is, you know, always trying to either match her up or match up the sister or, you know, whatever. And I think it's funny that, you know, because like you said, are they dating now? I don't think we really know. I think it was more like she likes him and he likes her. And so he went to the picnic, but they don't really know what they're doing. It, they're smashing, like you said, but are they a couple? You know, they were trying to trying to make a, a thing of it where uh, maybe they're going to date, maybe they're not. They're, you know, what's going on there? So I thought keeping that in the story was good. Right on. Uh, but yeah, introducing Scar at the end only makes sense from a standpoint of is there going to be a second season and is he going to be in it? Or are they just, did they literally just use that because they're going to do something with the character elsewhere in the MCU? That would be really shitty. I think that that's what they're going to do. I think they only introduced him so they can do the Young Avengers. Um, and and I have questions like, is he going to replace Hulkling? Instead of having Hulkling, you have uh, Scar. And I just go, okay, but then are you not going to do, you know, 
are is he going to be it's going to be scar and wiccan in a relationship in the comic book because that's what fans want they want the hulkling uh wiccan relationship even though personally i think those characters suck i personally didn't like those comic books that much but you know whatever it's fine but i do think i don't think that he's going to be in season two i really don't mm. and if he is like i uh, I if um I think they did say this is getting a season two. I don't know off the top of my head, and I didn't look it up. But if it does, I say get a whole new batch of writers. Nobody should on this season should come back. Like uh, just and just bring some competent people in, not some Rick and Morty writers. Um. But so the last scene the is. Comedy, you go ahead. I'm you sorry. Didn't, you didn't think some of the comedy was clever? Um, I will be honest with you. I didn't laugh once on this show. Get out of town. Yeah, not once. I mean, like, I m the only time that I think that I smiled and I thought it was fun was Madison. But yeah. I just, I think that was more of the performance than it was the writing. Because I think if you just would have had that somebody play that differently, it wouldn't have been as, you know, funny. But um, I'll say that. The Madison stuff was the only thing that I laughed at, even though I don't think I laughed. But uh other than that, no. I thought the designer was funny, the Jacob guy, the whole thing with the Avengers. I did. Well, uh, that was funny. Um, but I don't want to use the term funny because I, if if I don't like laugh or smile, like I will take it back. Luke Jacobs was, um, I just like sassy gays. So I was all like, when he was all like, what is there a hag convention in town? I was like, that's funny. Um, but it didn't make me laugh. It just made me go, that's funny. So I smiled. So um yeah i mean i'll give you that now that i think about that i'll say that that's funny too but um i can't think of any time that i like laughed out loud uh yeah. maybe like smiled or like a giggle maybe but i don't i don't think so i'm I'm like 90 percent sure i didn't laugh you're a tough nut to crack <laughs> I, uh, I, I, um, I really enjoyed the the stuff with wong you know and madison and then madison on her own i thought johnny blaze and his manager were funny uh gotcha I, uh let's see i'm trying to think what else the, the the, oh, I thought it was funny where the guy, and that's another thing that they messed up where the, the what's his name? The guy that doesn't die there, Mr. Immortal. Yeah, I I hated that. That episode made me like angry because yeah. they, you know, I think that there was no good men in this show. Um, I mean, Pug, you could argue Pug and her dad, but even then I felt like Pug, they got a jab at him with that, that light elf. You know, when he walks out and he's like, I love sexually assaulting women in the workplace. It's my kick. And I'm all like, you know, that character in the comic book has a crush on Jen, not She-Hulk, just Jen. And it never goes anywhere. And I was like, you know, you could have you could have explored that in this show uh, because he wasn't a bad dude. But they didn't. They didn't. They just uh, explored his his shoe, you know, yeah. collection. And I was like, OK, whatever. I mean, some stuff I think you have to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're saving for future seasons. But, but this, I uh, but see, and I understand what you're, and I've talked to people about this. I understand what you're saving, uh, saying, but I think that when you save stuff for another season, you have no guarantee that you're getting a second season. Look yeah. at Hawkeye. They announced that it was going to get a second season, and then they canceled it. It wasn't getting a second season. Mm. So I'm all like... You know, you don't, you can't, you can't save stuff. Do what you can now because you don't know if you're going to get a, a second chance to do that. Yeah, right, right. Uh, I th see, and I thought that they, I thought that they to sort of counter what you're saying. I thought they balanced out a lot of the anti male stuff. I thought, you know, like you say, Pug was good. The dad was good. Um, uh, Matt's a good guy. Uh, I thought Emil, they portrayed Emil as a good dude. I think that Emil was a good I feel like he was a good dude but he was just dumb like and plus they like he says he doesn't want Wi-Fi at his compound but then he's all like Wong he's like do you have Wi-Fi at uh, Comitage and I'm all like but you don't want Wi-Fi you need to connect with yourself what's going on here write another haiku what are you talking about you crazy bones <laughs> um yeah I mean like yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe they did balance it out. And I'm just trying to find the fact that there's no good men in this show. But because I just was like, every time, like her boss, I'm like, why didn't her boss defend her? Or like, 
try to help her out. Like when she went up for that award and then all these other women got an award, I was like, oh, it's a participation trophy. Why yeah. didn't he tell her that? Like, why wouldn't you give her the heads up on that? Because yeah. that was embarrassing. I was like, her face was like, oh, look at me. I'm an asshole because <laughs> I'm accepting a participation trophy. Um, and don't get me wrong. I don't think they balanced it out 100%. I think the scale was still tipped a little bit towards the man hating stuff. Yeah, and like like and, and go ahead. But, Sorry. No, no, you I, go. I think I think it was still a little too much, you know, man hating stuff versus showing guys as being decent, but you know, cuz even Luke, he's kind of a a a sassy gay like you said, but I think he was a decent guy. So I think they did some work to to balance it out, but it was still a little like we hate, you know, the 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 she woman man haters club <laughs> yes I, a little bit you know I do, not in balance but but i thought they did some work but they didn't balance and, out and i agree with i take back what i said that all the men in this show uh, i do think that they did try to because like you know pug he was a, a decent guy and then i do think her dad was a decent person i just while watching the show, man, maybe I was just trying to look for those things because as soon as I saw one thing, I was like, oh, and then I saw another one. I was like, oh, that's what's happening here. Yeah. And then I just picked out all the stuff and then just ignored the rest of it. Well, but you know, I do that stuff. That stuff is. Uh, more noticeable. Right. So right. I think I think they had both more instances of crapping on guys than they had showing guys being decent so i think it was heavy in the man haters direction but not only that it's much easier uh to show somebody being like a a goof or a jerk right than it is to i don't know if it's easier but it's more noticeable when you show somebody being a jerk because the behavior that they <laughs> that they demonstrate is so off-putting that it makes more of an impact than when they show somebody being decent because decent is sort of the, the baseline that, right. We're all supposed to be at least decent. So when you're seeing decent behavior, it, it doesn't register as hard as when you mm. see somebody say something like, you know, uh, females, am I right? You know, that, that just jumps out at you. So, yeah. So that's the other issue as well. Right on. Um, was there anything else on this show about this show that you wanted to say? I'm going to ask you one more question, but I just wanted to see if you wanted to say anything else about this show. Yeah. I mean, I would just go back to what I said in the beginning that I, I, I don't understand the extreme amount of like, and as much as you dislike it, you give it credit on certain things and you talk about the things you like. So I've always thought that your approach is honest. Whereas oh, I'm not, so, yeah, no, really. Where I'm not so sure that's true because we disagree, but I don't think you're full of crap. You know what yeah. I mean? I think you're saying what you, what, how it strikes you. Thank and that's you. like you were saying to me, you like what you like. And on your, and, and to, to sort of put that back on you, it strikes you the way it strikes you. And I think you right. come in honestly. I'm not so sure that's true of other people. So I would I, agree. You know, yeah, I don't understand other than saying that they're they're not coming at it honestly. I don't understand how it could be anything else that they hate it so much because like I said it wasn't a reinvention of the wheel, it wasn't a 10 out of 10, but I enjoyed watching it. It was a fun little show. I thought it was decent. So uh you know, I hope it gets a season 2. I'd like to see a season 2. I I think it was I don't want to say meh, but maybe a little bit above meh. Like I said, a 3.5. So out of five. So I don't know. I, I just, that's the big takeaway for me is I found it to be okay. I found it to be enjoyable and I don't get the massive, massive hate that doesn't even have little caveats like, like you do. And you'll say, I like this. I like that. So that's, that's kind of where I am. Right on. And I would agree with you. There are, and I think that some people, they just, they've made a career out of it. So it's like, listen, this is how I'm going to make my money. And I'm all like, I get it. Yeah. Uh, but I do go, you know, um, 
there are some there not everything in this show you can hate on i mean you know the cgi sucked but there were some places where the cgi that last scene where she's walking up the stairs to the courtroom i thought the cgi was pretty good yeah. that last uh the fourth wall breaking scene i thought the cgi was pretty good <clears throat> there's other parts where i'm like ah oh, jesus you guys did not put in the money in this episode <laughs> But overall, I didn't, I still didn't care for this show. I felt like for me personally, it was kind of draining. Like after I was done watching, I was like, well, I'm glad it's over because I won't revisit this. Um, I won't suggest it to anybody, but, um, and I don't think it's necessary to watch it to enjoy the rest of Marvel. Like, you know, yeah. some other shows, like I felt like you had to watch WandaVision to understand um, Doctor Strange. But yeah. um, I just, uh, yeah, I didn't like this show and I wish, I wish they would have done better. Um, and I, I do think it is getting a season two. I, I want to say that I saw it somewhere, but don't quote me on that because if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to give you false hope. All <laughs> right. So my, well, so my last question for you is uh, before we wrap this up is um, where would you personally like to see She-Hulk next? Not from where we know she's going to be at, like, uh, um, Captain America 4, America 4, where would you like to see She-Hulk next? <sighs> well, other than a season two, I can't really think of anything. Because, uh, uh, you know why? Because it'll be hard to... See, I hadn't heard that about Captain America 4. I think the way they presented her in the show, it'll be hard to incorporate her in other things, partly because of the... the four, well, largely because of the fourth wall breaking they did mm -hmm. that a lot and so i don't see how they're gonna work that into other projects and while i liked the humor on the show i the the humor came a lot from came from jen but it came from the other characters to a huge extent so how that's gonna work into anything else in the mcu where you know there's not a lot of whole not a whole lot of comedy focus like ant-man you know that character's kind of funny there's funny stuff in ant-man spider-man has some humor but it's largely more serious the mcu especially stuff like well dr strange has humor but dr strange is much more serious wandavision was way serious there was some comedy so i don't see how they fit a fourth wall breaking character into the mcu and i think they're going to struggle doing it with deadpool as well for the same reason mm, right so, on. other than the season two i can't i i think i'd like to see that I, i'm uh dubious about uh using her anywhere else i feel you um i do i do think uh some scoopers were saying she was also going to be in secret wars but i'm all like that's just going to be another you know infinity war slash end game so i don't understand how you couldn't incorporate her in there somehow yeah but I personally would not like a season two because I didn't <laughs> think season, unless they completely get rid of the entire writing staff and hire completely competent people to write. Um, but I was thinking they should do a TV special and I was thinking they should do a trial of the Hulk, but she Hulk is his lawyer. Um, mm -hmm. I thought I was like that, you know, uh, personally, that was like, you know, I, I would like to see that. But obviously, this is just of my own creation. Um, yeah. But yeah uh it's there's you know hey marvel i know you're watching listen to my idea i think it's a pretty decent one that werewolf by night i enjoyed it so you could do another you know uh you know hour long movie or special mm. so we're out of here guys i'm gonna leave you as i always do wishing you peace and long life